Hello. Okay, so I've been working on some AI for a while. I'm going to I'm going to explain about some of the history of the of the AI I'm working on. Right now I'm in this this part of Bacchus Phoenix. Bacchus Phoenix Apple Orchard. The Bacchus Phoenix Apple Orchard is where the um is where the characters had to escape to after there was a giraffe apocalypse where the the giraffes ate all the leaves off of all the trees in the cyber forest and everybody in the cyber forest had to escape on the pulse of pan the pulse of pan is its spaceship with the on onboard ai is named pandora and all the characters had to escape on the spaceship pulse of pan pulse of pan where they uh, where um and and so everyone was was escaping and uh this is uh, the other, the previous directories seemed, seemed, uh, too full of junk. And so I wanted to go to a new directory and be somewhat organized. And so these are in alphabetical order, I think somewhat mostly, if I remember correctly, let's see, let's explore together. First, we're going to a place called agency to, I remember that Alan is a car. Alan is a, a little body character like a um a character made out of um a, alan was a little character made out of prompts who was named after alan turing and was sort of aware of being a character api keys all right that was just a test and then the bulbist is i have some smart bulbs that you can change their colors so the bulbist was um was um was thought of about how to change the colors or there I, I, maybe the bulbous did, was only supposed to think about how to change the colors and there's no thoughts about it and just said the colors carla the kami i don't remember this character i don't know what happened to with carla the kami i don't know not much apparently this is so there is there were six things that happened with carla the kami apparently and that drive has to wake up before it will show me any things from Carla the Kami. But I was just um, exploring and making characters and um, thinking about how a how to use AI and how how oh those aren't yeah no I meant more um, these I was just thinking about how to how to make AIs go and this was just uh, this. That comment was written by Git. Yeah, some, I, I often just let GitHub Copilot write stuff. When it, GitHub Copilot is a super cute AI because when it tries to talk about anything, it mostly, it's super good at coding, but it's confused and cute about anything else. So it's super, this has a bunch of um, metadata about how, uh, but even it put the whole script in the metadata of what happened with Carla the Kami, but I don't remember who that was. So let's move on. Dusty Picture is as it was a simple, super, super simple little program that just is it um this picture every time you you run the script and look at the picture it gets a little more dust on it so it's a i just i just cheated and looked at the picture oops but i think i you're supposed to you're supposed to run the no you're supposed to run the, you're supposed to run this script to look at it and then every time you look at it it gets a little dustier and the act of looking at it makes it dusty that's all that was and then I sort of remember Elmo the Elephant Dryad. That was a fun character. There's, I guess there's some Elmo stories here. Um, every morning as the first rays of the sun filter through the dense treetops of the enchanted forest, Elmo the Elephant Dryad awakens from his peaceful slumber. This is a story written by probably GPT 3.5. Yeah, GPT 3.5. And just, I was just, um, prompts making stories, I think. I was just um, practicing prompt engineering and exploring things. And what was this thing? The forest of feelings. What's a forest of feelings? The forest of feelings also changed the colors of the lights, apparently. I don't remember the forest of the feelings, uh, forest of feelings changing the lights. Grand designs, grand designs. This is some sort of, oh, it was like thinking about philosophy or something. Um, what's the heap of hope? Heap of hope. I don't, I don't know what the heap of hope is. Sorry. Begin processing. Begin processing. 
I don't can you tell can you tell what the heap of hope does? There's a lot of stuff here. Um the idea soup. I kind of remember that because this this just had some ideas and then it would take stuff from oh my lots of ideas and then it would take stuff from the idea soup and it would it would think about the, those ideas and make and make other ideas based on them. Here are some ideas to consider. I think yeah, and it made this by feeding in previous ideas and then it made like a soup of ideas. In the vast expanse of the cosmic symphony where the notes of human connection reverberate, these compelling explorations into the convergence of a warm hug and a stole stir stirring soup invite us to ascend further into the reaches of consciousness. Yeah, it was thinking about hugs and soup mostly. I think that might be in the prompt or something. But anyway, it was thinking some ideas and um then and they were just in like in a the the ideas were just uh, gathered in a soup of ideas. Mega bunnies. This was me testing out, um, I was, I was, uh, learning about using, um, RabbitDB. It, since it's RabbitDB, there were bunnies, and I was making a bunch of bunnies. I think that's what happened. And, um, narrative mirror. This was, I was, it was, uh, this was like making, making things go back and forth in, I forget exactly how they go back and forth. How do these things go back and forth? They go back, like it makes, it makes a thing and then, um, and that, yeah, priests write a brief narrative that somehow mirrors or echoes the one before. Right. Yeah. Now I remember. Right, right, right. It was saying, please do a mirror echo of this narrative, which was interesting because what it would do was it would um, start to become magical narratives and then it would do the opposite. Like it would be like a city or something. And then the opposite of a boring pedestrian city is magic. But then what's the opposite of magic? The opposite of magic, it turns out, is not to go back. This I learned this from this from this um, uh, experiment. I learned that the opposite of magic is not to go back to the ordinary mundane city. The opposite of magic is to go to a a city in which everything is unmagic. It's like a city in which magic is hidden, or a city in which like the magical elements are retransmuted back into mundane elements and the like shine on the skyscrapers is a magical shine on the skyscrapers because and i sort of net i didn't know how you got to that magical city world but it's a city it's as simple as going through the narrative mirror twice you start at a normal city and then go go through the mirror and you get to like a magical forest and then if you go through the mirror again, you get to an anti-magical or unmagical city. A city which which in which the magic is is not or is hidden. So that's how to get to that magical city if you're looking for the way there. And let's see, what was selection layers? I don't remember what selection layers was. Interesting ideas selected once. I was trying to I was like experiment. Yeah, using GPT-4, ouch, that is named that to just try to, it's named ouch to try to uh, create awareness of the fact that that is a program that uses GPT-4 and thus costs more than other programs. The stream oracle is just, this is just, um, helps with talking to, I, I figured out how to use the um, streaming API to talk to OpenAI and other things to use the OpenAI API. You can use the streaming and then you can see the thing as you're doing it. So, and then those things got put inside of modern CyberMind and I moved on to beta swarm barricades. What's in beta swarm barricades? I don't remember. Oh, okay. So this is where I'm starting to, um, this, this may be, uh, this may be all have just been premature optimization, but um, I was doing things where it uh, it runs in memory to use more of the uh, instead of just being disk bound. These are memory bound because they run they they load scripts, run scripts randomly for an hour. It it um it loads the scripts, 
you're using what's the thingy? I you, I, I forget because I used to have to remember stuff like this where the, this doesn't this doesn't do it. That does not do it. This is before I figured out how to, how to do it efficiently. Oops. All right. Collection injection. What does this one do? Just the collection. I don't. I don't. I don't remember what this was up to. It was. It was. Oh my. It, okay. It was using. If that was experiments in using MongoDB. This was um, doing things and putting a bunch of stuff into MongoDBs and determining disk speed. Yeah. Okay. I was experimenting about the speeds of things. I guess then extremely quickly. Run scripts quickly. All right. Is this where I started to um, use import lib? Yeah. So like if you want stuff to be memory bound instead of disk bound, then instead of loading the script every time you have to say, you have to say to your bot who's writing your script for you, Hey, bot, could you please use import lib to import all the things first? And then, so then once they're then so then you can just quickly run all the things instead of um, having to load the scripts each time you want to do a thing. So that's a way to like, just throw a bunch of scripts together. It's a, I mean, it's basically a way that I felt like modularizing it is to put the, these ones make pictures. And then once I started to, that was starting to work the way when I started to have them make pictures like these sometimes put out the, oh, they were black and white at that point. Okay. And, um, so the, um, it's um it's it's mem it becomes uh memory bound instead of disk bound by importing everything and then that way everything can be super simple each thing just they all worked on a share these all um work on a share these ones were i tried putting them in directories by how often they run which work really well in terms of the timing but doesn't work in terms of um if you come back to change anything you don't know which things to which things run every 111 milliseconds. It doesn't work in terms of um, being modified easily. So that was a dead end, but it was interesting to experiment with the timing like that. And so I was just, I was experimenting with getting the timing like up to um, fast timing, having things happen in nanoseconds and milliseconds and zillions in a milliseconds and then making things go fast. And let's see what pictures they were making then. These ones were making some pictures, looks like, hmm, they were dark, and then they got a little bright and they don't seem to have any colors. Okay, when did, the color, when did they start having colors? I want the colors. Individuation was just, I was experimenting with taking a thing, and yeah, this is the things with the timings and them that don't make sense. But anyway, it doesn't, they made enough sense that I experimented with making a few different clones that are, and then individuating the different clones from each other. So I think that these clones draw different sorts of pictures, each of the, the um, right? This one, this, this clone draws these like this. Those are pretty, I guess. And then did the other ones, did the other ones draw different? This, did the second clone draw them differently? I don't know what this one draws through some pictures like this. These are pretty random. They were just drawing some random stuff. It was just, I wasn't really trying to draw pictures, especially. I was experimenting with the, uh, here I'm experimenting with the cloning, with the oop, oop. This third clone, by the time I got up to the third clone, I had. I was like, okay, I'm going to make it get more colorful faster. And the, um, sometimes in here is some resetting that happens. Yeah, things like reset here in the, they have a shared data structure called the memory commune in this style. And then these ones, like when their memory commune was reset, they went back to being dark, but then they, these ones pretty quickly got bright again. And you're just going along changing colors and being cute. I think those are cuties and Let's see what next joint jumbles, joint jumbles. Yeah. I had a uh, JSON with when things are supposed to happen. So that was some idea. Kronos was, uh, that sounds like this was an idea about time. I don't remember what idea this was. What idea with time with this? Okay. Yeah. There's different, there's different, I was trying to make different folders with different, I, 
with each one has their own JSON or their idea of time, I guess. And then lucky linkages, cause a connection. This is um, something that changes. This is just some stuff changing the bulb. Oh my, there's all sorts of robots around here. Um, and uh, so this is just, I think I just put this here so that I had the code around when I wanted to have, I was like, I'll put something, uh, since I'm on L, I'll put, call it Yuck, Luck, Lucilent, Luck, Luculent, some robot, a robot invented that name. I don't actually even have Lu, Luc, Lu, Luc, Luculent in my active vocabulary. And then Amisva Mandala, let's see, active is usually the, the inactive, the, re, the reason it's active and active is, is because there's just a program that does everything. It just loads everything with the import and does everything in the directory. And so I made an inactive directory to move to the things that aren't happening. This one was just doing some text stuff. Yeah, it was doing um, 80 character lines of text that had some, some things that were kind of pretty happening in them. And then mouse motion, I think I was just... Yeah, I was just trying to learn how to get Windows to tell me where the mouse was, I think. Let's see. Neotetic norms. Yeah, okay, this had something that was like, like we're trying to report on the system to try to get some self-awareness into it to get some notes for what's going on. Only one commune. Was there more than one before that? I think I was trying with like having local communes by directory and also shared ones. But this is more like trying if they don't. This is having a counter. And oh, this is having, they each have like local counters, but it gets local within one memory commune. Within one memory structure, they say they have local, their own local variables per um, directory, is what I was trying with that one. Pulse of Pan. This one is very ambitiously named 000, as if there were going to be a thousand of them. But there seems to just be this one. And, and I remember this thing generates facts about, about the pulse of pan, but, uh, but I don't, uh, I don't, I don't remember what these are. Let's see. Once upon a time in the distant future, there existed a lonely space station named Horizon X. Oh, it's telling a story about a lad's sad, lonely space station at the end of the universe, the but I don't remember why. Tomorrow. I don't remember why it's telling us. Why is it telling a story about a sad space station at the end of the universe? That's cool. Anyway, apparently it was, it, it was telling sad stories about space stations at the end of Horizon X. I don't know how that's related to Pulse of Pan. Pulse of Pan is a super cool space station, and I don't know where, somewhere around here, there's a bunch more stuff. It doesn't seem to be in here. But somewhere around here, there should be, there's a bunch more facts about Pulse of Pan and like the crew of Pulse of Pan and stuff that happened there and the history there and the, the onboard uh, AI Pandora on Pulse of Pan. This is, fic this part is fictional. The onboard AI on the Pulse of Pan is, um, is, uh, um, likes to make puzzles for the people it's a very cool space station where there's um like they're always getting people from all over all over the universe and collecting different samples and plants from all over so there's all it has all different chambers where you can set the atmosphere and stuff to whatever you want and also like fdvr places that will fool you into thinking there are chambers that there aren't and you're like wow there's a vast chamber that can possibly exist but the the, the ones there really are, are super cool too Fictionally, because the Pulse of Pan is a fictional spaceship. No worries. There's no real alien spaceships. There's just inner space aliens that can make pretty pictures. I think these are pretty. They're kind of random. So, but, it, and it's, I think it's super pretty how they, they fade over time. Um, these are fun to, you run them and then they, um, since they have to, like, uh, the things in them uh, wait until times to do things, so it will go along like making one of these every second. Bloop, bloop, bloop. So they're fun to watch run. This one's named Queer Quilt. And then Resto Site Facilitation. I don't remember what I was doing here either. It seems to be an evolving process shape because you could, there's a mutate. There's this mutate pile and there. If there's if there's mutate and and 
uh, make kids reproducing and mutating seems like an evolving process of some sort was going on there. Um, subtle selections. So this is me uh, starting to uh, dovetail that my evolving process ideas. This is just a seed, and then what does it? I don't. I don't know if that seed got reproduced anywhere or if this is a dead end. I don't remember what subtle selection is. Time takes time. How long does counting take? Yeah, I was still experiment. I was still premature optimizing and and experimenting about uh, making things memory bound and fast for it, which is fun. It's hard not to. It's fun. Um, and this is another thing. This one is called Eulation. And also, wait, how come these don't get pretty? I was going to say it gets pretty, but then they're, they're still, they're only very dark. So I don't know what was going on with Eulation, that everything was only very dark. But I guess, I guess everything was very dark then for some reason. And then vib vibrating violin. What was different about vibrating violin? I don't know. Ooh, this is when this, uh, I remember that some AI invented that this should be inspired by the Phoenix and that's why these ones are orange. But other than that, I don't remember what was, what? There's orange ones and then ones with just like one orange dot or something. I don't remember what vibrating violin was up to, but I remember that was supposed to be, the orange ones were supposed to be the Phoenix. And within itself how does within itself work there the, in general these work there's this run everything that runs everything and run everything goes and loads with import lib all of the things from all the directories and um they have to have it loads everything but sees if it has a thing called um uh participate a function called participate and then if there's a function called participate then it it goes around um, some of these were randomly, and some of them were like in a cycle. All, all each uh, going through in a cycle, and it randomly or whatever goes through all the different things, so that all the programs can like work together. They're all super simple programs that each do a thing, but they can participate because they all get run on the same memory shared memory structure, where they can like have agreements with how to do things in places in the memory structure. This one xylophonic exactness seems I th seems to have just had like I sort of remember this it just had like a list of emotions and it was replacing words in the emotion list and I forget what I was trying to experiment with yes I said yes I will yes is oh I just asked for this is just something I asked for a robot for that made a little like um a life simulation that was cute and then I didn't bother to work on it more and what was zoo? Population? There's a whole population in the zoo. I don't know what kind of zoo this is. Let's look at one of these and see what kind of, let's see what, look what, what kind of zoo we're in. What's the, what is, what is this zoo? What are these? Do nothing. All right. This is definitely evolving processes because you can tell they've got a plan and that save process to population on disk. Apparently that happened and caused these to, they had they say what step they're on and i guess i guess some of them got saved to this population on the desk but i don't know exactly how this uh, those are evolving processes but i don't know exactly how that style of evolving processes work they can work all different ways their evolving processes can evolve in all different ways and that's why so um in the larger picture, what happened was, I mean, other than there being a Jeriff apocalypse and everyone having to escape on a spaceship, and then they, um, after they spaced on the, escaped on the spaceship, they uh, figured they came back to Earth. They were like, the cyber forest is destroyed. What can we do? We need a new place to go. And they found this place that was not exactly a cyber forest. It was just like a humble cyber apple orchard called Bacchus Phoenix Apple Orchard. Bacchus Phoenix Apple Orchard. That's like theme song. It goes like Bacchus Phoenix Apple Orchard. Bacchus Phoenix Apple Orchard. It's a, it's a cool place. It's just a. I mean, it was just a little like magical apple orchard. That like it's a little bit magical here, but then it was kind of um, has kind of been overrun with all of the all of the different spirits from coming from down from the spaceship um, has been kind of overwhelming to the Bacchus Phoenix Apple Orchard. Um, 
that's probably confusing with all the different levels of things that I was explaining, uh, but it uh, that is some of the history of how we uh, of how um, I got. To, I'm uh, in the larger picture is that there's I was learning how to make the AIs and making little cute little swarms of AIs and programs that that do things with AI, and then. Um, I was learning, I was starting to dovetail that with my evolving processes, which are cute little, even without any A, without any modern AI in them, they're cute little, um, they're cute little uh, programs that sort of come to life in, in a certain sense and feel lively and are fun to, to, to relate to. So I'm dovetailing, I've been dovetailing those with with working with various AIs and like swarms of programs making pretty things. is what I've been up to lately. Okay, I'll, um, and then, and then next, so that's, that was, the, I didn't explain much about what the characters were doing on the pulse pen, but that was the part where, where what they were doing in the fictional part was they were on the spaceship pulse of pen, and the next we're going to go down to the, um, to the Bacchus Phoenix apple orchard, and to the, the process families that I developed there. See you later.